Shelly was singing this morning. I was thinking about special moment verses. I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Have you ever found yourself there? Stuff is beginning to happen in life. And you just don't understand why. You, you begin to wonder, you know, God, are you there? And I have this question to start off the message, several questions off the message this morning. The message is entitled, but even if he doesn't. And I ask this question, said, what are you to do if God doesn't answer the way, answer you the way that you think he should? Or maybe he answers completely opposite. Or there might be a possible where it seems like he didn't even answer at all. What do you need to do? What do you do? And this, the thought of this message came to me probably about two months ago. We were already in the, um, the Beatitude series, and, and I was sitting at home, and I was watching some of the assignments on TV. But there are certain ones I like to watch. And a lot of times on Sunday afternoon, whenever I'm done here, I'll go home, and I'll go upstairs. We have a chair upstairs in our bedroom, and I'll turn on the TV, and I'll watch the programs that I recorded and get to just... Uh, let people feed me. You know, yes, I feed myself through, through devotion, through prayer, but also let others speak into my life also. And as I was sitting there, a thought came to mind. I guess it may have had a little to do with whoever was, I can't even remember exactly who was even talking on the screen at the time, but this thought began to come to mind. And, and, and I was thinking about this story here, and, and the thought came to mind. But even if he doesn't, then what? Because so many times, I mean, you know, we're told in uh, the church that God's got, God's going to move this way. God's going to do that. God's going to do this. God's going to do whatever He wants to do as long as it lines up with His character and who He is. Because again, I, I've told you some times past, I'm telling you today, God sees the whole big picture. We don't. Many times we think we know the road that's laid out there before us and all of a sudden it seems like something is thrown away. We need to understand. Nothing ever, ever takes God by surprise. It never catches Him off guard. It never uh, gets Him upset. Nothing ever catches Him by surprise. But many things catch us by surprise. Many things will catch us off guard. But even if He doesn't, what then? This first account, this may turn into a series of messages. As I begin to work on this, all of a sudden God began to bring other individuals in the Bible to my mind. And I said, okay, we can look at it from this way, and we can look at it from this way, and so on and so forth. So this might be a couple weeks that we're looking at this thought. But, but, but I believe God has brought this forth to encourage you today to realize that He is in control. And it's, it's our job, our, it is our job to figure it out. It's our job to trust Him. I don't know if any of you, if you're on Facebook, maybe saw the post that the church put on there. I talked about my devotion and how I talked about Proverbs. Uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember the word. I think it was 19 uh, 3. Um, it said, you know, people find themselves in trouble basically that, that they get themselves into, and then all of a sudden they'll get angry at God about it. And I said, that's how it is a lot of times with people. We make our own mess, and also we want to look at God and say, God, why did you do this to me, or why did all this happen? And, and the majority of the time, we've got ourselves in that own, in own place. But he's a gracious guy most of the time, and what does he do? He pulls our keister out of the fire. But yet we have the nerve to get angry at him. But you know what? He's a big enough God to handle it. He's a big enough God. So this morning, as I look at this, the, the one we're going to, the, the account we're going to look at this morning, it, it, it's, it, it ends in a very positive way. It ends, it ends in a miraculous way. But also, when we get to the end, I want to look at it maybe even just a little bit different. The, those of you who have been in church any amount of time, I'm sure you've heard this story before, this account, but I, I just want to look at it this morning and place it in modern times. And how does it fit with us today? How does it fit with our living? Because as we begin to read this, you may sit there and say, well, you know, I'm not going to be like those guys because we don't have a ruler like that anymore gonna, that does that kind of stuff. But do we or don't we? And let, let's look at it here this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you follow on the screen, you can be behind me. But if you're the type of person who wants to follow along in your Bible, if you have your Bible, turn to Daniel chapter 3. We're going to be looking basically at this whole chapter here this morning. Uh, but Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 is what we're going to start off with. 